So growing fruit trees, uh, we want to help them by pruning them so they form a good structural shape. And because a lot of times we grow them to pick the fruit, we may also want to uh, enhance a structure that makes picking of the fruit easier. Okay, so really um, we're trying to help a tree grow so that it's physiologically very robust and very strong uh, and structurally sound and also functional for us uh, in growing the kind of fruit we want, uh, big, juicy, well-flavored fruit uh, and accessible fruit uh, so that we can pick it off the tree. So I have this cross section here uh, of a tree stem uh, that I cut in half so that uh, we can demonstrate um, how a, a tree functions. And uh, um, the only growing part on a tree is a thin layer of cells right underneath the bark uh, called the cambium layer. And every spring and early summer those cells start to divide and it grows a layer to the outside and a layer to the inside. So this is important because in growing fruit trees, uh, we want the tree to grow into a form that is uh, structurally sound because uh, uh, apples or pears or plums or cherries are very heavy. And if the tree doesn't form a branch structure that is very sound, the branches will break off. And any kind of damage to a tree is a place, entry place for insects and diseases uh, to affect the tree and potentially kill the tree. So once your fruit tree that you've planted has uh, established itself, has a good growing root system, a good crown, uh, two to three years after planting, it's time to start shaping it into a shape that's optimal for tree health and fruit production. So there's a couple trains of thought as to what is the basic architecture we want uh, a tree to develop into. This tree has been pruned into what we call a basket shape where we don't have a main central leader that grows tall. That's been removed as the tree's been growing. And instead we've promoted uh, three to five lateral branches to grow outward into a basket shape. And that way what we're basically creating here is a tree that's a big umbrella. So the leaves are all optimally placed in the sunlight for photosynthesis. That's very important because the leaves produce the sugar that's necessary to produce the fruit. And in this case, the cherries that are gonna be produced are a direct function to how much uh, photosynthesis this tree can conduct, which is a function of how efficient the leaves are and the overall leaf area of the tree. So at this point, we want to prune this tree so it is a perfect solar collector and also is accessible for picking the cherries uh, once they're ripe on the, on the tree. Uh, this area in Montana, Flathead Lake, is fairly isolated, so actually here most of the commercial uh, fruit tree growers uh, will prune them this time of year. And for apple trees and pear trees, plum trees, etc., uh, end of March is the ideal time to start pruning these trees uh, for summer fruit production and good architecture. So we take a closer look uh, at this overall uh, structure of the tree. Uh, we want the branches, each branch, to have its unique space in the sunlight and in the air. Uh, we don't want branches growing into each other. So really the first step of pruning is to look at branches that are growing into the tree rather than growing out from the tree. We call these interfering branches because they are eventually going to grow into other branches, interfere with them, rub on them, create injuries. We have uh, the hand Pruners, uh, bypass cutting head usually works the best, uh, makes a clean cut. So anything that's a half inch or less is plenty easy to cut off. And we just snip the interfering branches off. Uh, this one that's growing into the tree, that's kind of big for this. So I have the lopping shears for that. And we can easily uh, prune those off. Likewise, we work our way around the tree and any branches that are growing into each other, we want to remove. So that this tree will grow outwards, uh, there'll be good aeration in it, uh, and we won't have branches shading other branches because leaves that are in the shade can't adequately photosynthesize, they don't produce sugar, and they may actually steal sugar from the leaves that are in the sun just to stay alive. So we want all the leaves positioned in the sun and uh, we want to have uh, a good positioning architecture out here. Uh, the more sun absorption, the more sugar production, 
uh, the more fruit production we'll get. So we always will prune back to uh, within about a quarter inch of an existing branch or bud. So that way when sugar transport from the leaves comes down and water transport comes up, it goes right by the cut and that cut will heal quickly. We don't want open wounds because this is where fungal and bacterial infection can occur. So if I can hang, hang my hat on it, it's sticking out too far. I want a nice smooth cut uh, because that will heal a little bit better. But anytime I see bad cuts, I want to try and correct those. Uh, so the ideal cut on here would be right there. And you can see this dead area right here that uh, has difficulty healing. But now that I've made it smooth, the living tissue will grow over that dead area, seal it off, and this stem will then become more impervious and resistant to fungal and bacterial infections. Open wounds on a tree are just like open wounds on a person. Uh, they're prone to infection. And so the, the whole point behind pruning is to create as little injury as possible and that those injuries heal quickly. In cultivating any trees, but especially fruit trees, uh, there are a variety of diseases that will affect them. And the best way to uh, manage diseases is to prune them out as soon as you see them. So a fungal canker or a bacterial infection will usually attack one or two branches uh, first and then try to spread to the rest of the tree. So you want to prune those infected areas out. And so I may have bacterium or fungal spores or mycelium on there. And then I go to prune and shape a healthy tree. I'm actually inoculating that tree with a disease. So it's really important uh, to clean off your tools uh, uh, periodically, especially if you're pruning out disease, you want to uh, clean them off immediately afterwards. And so uh, I generally like about a 20% Clorox solution, uh, denatured alcohol. I mean, and you know, as you can see, this saw has a, a fair amount of debris or deposit old sap on it. And you really want to get all of that off uh, when you're uh, uh, going from tree to tree.